Hi there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to reading Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Today we start on book four, which continues basically where we left off of book three. Um, basically, starting with book two, three, and four, you have the account of what we call, what Aristotle in the, tech, the tradition calls the moral virtues. Right. He talks about in two, he goes into the question of what virtues are, right? The questions of the virtues, what they are not. Uh, he goes into the question of what what constitutes the virtues in terms of versus habits and choice and things like this. Um, and starting and then he gives an outline and a, a, a general account of three. Uh, uh, end of two and three, there's this count of uh, 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 the virtues in that sense. We have a, we have a, what we call a systemic account. Where is it? I'll get, uh, in fact, this is one of the annoying things about the outline that's presented in, in uh, uh, book three. He says, well, starting in three six, we get the, uh, uh, the, the, the elaborated more virtue. And he's correct. Virtue, uh, we have a discussion here about virtues in general, and that is what he says. And this is really uh, annoying in the outline and page. Look, this is on page what's it, Roman numeral 23. Yeah, Roman numeral 23 before the translation, the last page before we start the translation, right? Um, the, inner, the, the first part of this is kind of, uh, he doesn't really give us a, in de they don't give us a detailed outline here. And I think that is the weakness of this. You know, this is a general outline. He says, okay, uh, yes, happiness begins in uh, 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 book one, right? In book two, uh, 113, we get a, a, a beginning of uh, one book one, chapter 13, you get the beginning of this. Uh, and then at ch book three, chapter five, we get the account of, Book, you know, all through book three, we get a discussion. Book three, one chapters one through five, we get a introduction to the virtues and voluntary action of, of, of what virtue is, what versus what's not. But at the end of two, you get a discussion, a brief, a series, not end, but like the, the, you know, the, the various chapters of two, you get a, a, an initial count about what virtue is, right? So the discussion of virtue is a very good one. Now, this is the account, he says, the 11 moral virtues that, you know, we talk about that, 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 that uh, Collins and then the highlight, starting with 3.6, you know, courage and moderation, which is in the end 3.6 to 3.12. In other words, um, we get this very interesting account. We get a, 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 a courage is, again, the question of pain, you know, why in three he deals with this? He deals with in book three the questions of the lower and the, the lower part of the soul, right? The lower part of the soul, the souls of the pleasure and pain, the things that, that that are common with the animals. So first he deals with courage and then a uh, uh, sune in moderation, and he gives a uh, uh, six uh, chapter six, seven, and nine, a uh, six, seven, eight, nine on uh, courage, the question of courage and the, its opposites. Um, and then uh, 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 10, 11, 12 on sophosune moderation and the, uh, uh, licentiousness, right? And we discover that in this video. Now, starting in chapter four, he's continuing. He's gonna continue this. Now, What's going to happen here, and the chapter four has basically a, 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 a nine chapters. And what we do is there, well, wait, wait a minute, we have so-called 11 moral virtues, right? Frozen, frozen. Frozen. Okay, we had a froze for a second. Something happened. Oh, the computer decided to go. I, I don't want to work with you today. So I apologize for that. Um, we have a very interesting thing here in the chapter four, book four, 
is we are supposed to, we're going to, you know, we, we've gone through the 11th, so there's, uh, we're left with the so-called moral virtues, which are courage, moderation, the 11 virtues is courage, moderation, liberality, magnificence, greatness of soul, ambition, or uh, uh, gentleness, friendliness, truthfulness, wittiness, and justice. Justice is not discussed here. Justice will give a book of its own. Book five, justice will be addressed. He doesn't talk about justice on its own terms here. In fact, justice is a very a big, complex moral virtue in that sense. And that re this requires a chapter of its own. One wonders why, why, if that's the case, why aren't all of these given a chapter of their own as well? And, but not a chapter, but a book of their own. Uh, chapter, I'm sorry, book. Book five will be all of the book five of the politics will be on the question of virtue. I mean, the question of justice, right? So what is interesting about this is the um, what happens here. And, uh, and therefore, if we understand of that, therefore, of the 11, two of them have been dealt with, and one will give you chapter five. So therefore, of the 11, we know that uh, uh, eight, how is it? Who is it? Yeah, uh, 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 eight are left, right? Eight, 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 eight must be left. But there's nine chapters in eleven, so that's problematic. Well, wait a minute. We know there's nine chapters, and everyone is getting a chapter of their own. And this is leaves us chapter nine of uh, the ethics. Is what the chapter nine of book four would be the weird one. It's it's he talks about something that's not a virtue. He ends something that that at one level is a virtue, plays with virtue, but is not a virtue. And we'll get to that as at all. But, but what's so interesting here, unlike what happened with the lower, the virtue, and in fact, the, the question of these are virtues are higher in that sense. There seems to be, we end with the discussion that, well, in book three, we're dealing with the end of book three, uh, the virtues and questions are the ones common with the animals in that sense. These are the, the uh, from the lower soul. Uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not really tied to this. Uh, and intellectual virtue, the pure reason, okay, that is the case. But these virtues that we're going to be dealing here in book four will be. Uh, and in fact, this is interesting from the point of view of organization. Okay, why does he give a chapter of each virtue? Why didn't he do that earlier? something happens. Now, the, there's lots of problems. And the problem is that, first of all, we have to remember that how we got the, these works are through so many editors that we don't know what is Aristotle's hand and what's not Aristotle's hand. Okay. Um, uh, there's been so many in his different manuscripts because of the, uh, the way the text has been transmitted over time. And the, the copying and the copying and the copying of the handheld copying and the errors were included. And hence why there's a whole question of the manuscripts in which, and there's discussion. This is what why in the text there's the debate about why do we choose this manuscript or this, or maybe we shouldn't pay attention to this term in the Greek because maybe it's an error or maybe it's a better term or there's a, there's a, there was a, you know, handwriting error and that something should have been this way was this way. You know, this is a big question in Aristotle. This is the question, and this is what it leads us to a problem of, well, what's really Aristotle's and what's not Aristotle? This is something I kind of hit on in my 2004 book on Aristotle, Aristotle's best regime, where I, in the introduction I addressed this question. And my argument is usually we should take the text as we've given it and try to deal the best with it. And that's right. Uh, take, take a thought, take, in other words, deal with the text and the intellect behind the text and not get too caught up with the question of the true, you know, real Aristotle and therefore we have to find out what, whether this is the editor or not. Well, maybe the Aristotle here is now not a individual, the actual, the actual Aristotle, but rather the mind behind this text, including the editing. Okay, that there is a mind behind here and that the mind is, has been helped the editing is kind of helped or includes in that mind 
Uh, but we don't know. This is the problem. This is the positive Aristotle I argued in my book. Um, I'm, I, oh, oh, oh. And this is something that's very important for the politics because it's a, the question of books and structures here. Very, it's you know, it's arbitrary. Now, why does the structure here? Can we can we say anything about the ordering of the chapters and the way it's presented here? And I'm not sure. I, 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 this is a this is a debate. This will be a debate. But today we're going to be looking at chapter one of book four, which deals on one theme, and that is liberality. So let's turn to it. It's going to be a long chapter, so we're going to, it's going to go through it. So let us speak next in order about liberality. Now, so there's an order. The order is the order that was presented before. He presents an order at the beginning, at the very beginning, uh, 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 where he discusses this. He gives his list. He compares the list and does that. I think it's in book two. I think it's... Uh, to Yeah, two, seven, eight, nine. Deals with the mean. Yeah, then more virtues at two, nine. And then goes on three. Yeah, beginning of three. He goes on to the involuntary. So we get a sketch of the, uh, 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 the early virtues. Yeah, okay, this is at 3, 8, 2, 8, chapter 2, chapter 8, 7, and 8, uh, 2, chapter 7. Yeah, we get the discussion of that, 2, chapter 7. And then there's three dispositions right, in, in chapter 7 and 8. So that's the first kind of listing of what he does there, right? Um, so we're going to go today on liberality. So it's it's the order next after 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 courage and moderation, which is interesting in that sense. Okay, and these are these are virtues no longer tied to the pleasure and pain. Okay, but are tied to other things. It seems then to be mean with respect to money now. Oh, no, here's the problem. It's, it's the word in Greek, kremata, which, and it's distinguished from legal currency, nomese. Uh, so it's this is about, not only about money, it can also mean about, because it was meant money is in terms of this, it means uh, property or resources, goods, good, you know, property or goods. Goods. In fact, I disagree with money here. I think if it was money, we, if, if, if it, 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 it would have to be no matter, if he meant money, it would have been a, 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 a no masa. No uh, uh, masa, ma, no masa, ma, okay? It isn't no masa, ma, it is a kremeta, things, you know, the things, the property, the goods. It's about goods, about our goods, our our, our property, our, our, our things. How do we handle? Therefore, it's a mean with respect to property. Um, for a liberal person, a free person, a free person, a liberal person, is praised not in situations of war, or in those in which the moderate person, so for Sune, the sound-minded person, is praised. Or again, in those that involve legal adjudication. Uh, 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 in other words, it's not a liberal person. But this is the, the, the liberal person here. The liberal person, the person of liberality. This is what the liberal came to ask me. I go back to the liberal. The liberal person, the person that who's the, 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 the person who is engaged, the person who manifests the virtue of liberality, the characteristics, the character of being liberal. 
okay, of being li liberal is not something whose a, a, a situation of war, it's not the question of moderate with the, of our passions in terms of that a moderate person is praised, right? Or again, those involved legal adjudications. Okay? Rather, he is praised when it comes to the giving and taking of money. Okay, may, money is not the right word here. Again, I think it's... Okay, I just did a quick check of the Greek. It's still not, I, again, he's using money when he should be using the word property or good, you know, goods, right? Um, um, in other words, he's praised when it comes to the giving and taking of his goods, of goods, and more regard with the giving of it. In other words, the giving and taking, and more so with regards to the giving of it, right? We, we mean by krimata, uh, 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 property. All the things worth, uh, the things worth is measured in legal currency. Now, this is the word where uh, nometa comes in. This word. This is where it is. This is money and money measured in money. Yeah. Okay. This is. I'm, I'm getting picky here. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 this is. You know, I would translate it differently in terms of that. Um, and, uh, we mean current's property here, not money. I think money misleads us here. I think I think Bartlett and Collins by using money here are misleading us. Um, I think we have to understand this in terms of goods. The goods in that sense, the goods we have. And, our, and our, the goods and resources that we have and how we do it. Now, it's measured, can be measured in terms of money or legal currency, but it's not. When we speak of money, we speak of currency, okay? This is how we use the concept. We, we, it, it is not, oh, we don't have money and then we have legal currency. No. It's, when people speak of money, they mean legal currency. Therefore, translating this as money is misleading. I mean, I like this translation. Uh, 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 I, I'm a fan of generally of the Bartlett, uh, 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 the Straussians do in the translation. But here, this is misleading. Um, um, so, in other words, it's a uh, uh, okay, out here goes prodigality and stinginess. I mean, prodigality means you know, you know, giving, spending too much. Uh, being, you know, kind of wasteful in that sense, right? Uh, uh, prod, uh, uh, prodigality, uh, prodigality and stinginess are excesses and deficiencies pertaining to goods. Okay. This is an excess and this is a deficiency, right? Goods, kind of thing. And while we always ascribe stinginess to those who are more serious about goods, property, uh, 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 than they ought to be. We sometimes as, uh, uh, assign them the term prodigality to, uh, to a combination of things. For we call it pro, uh, uh, prodigal, those who lack self-restraint and who, in their licentiousness, spend lavishly, right? In other words, they have no self-restraints and they spend lavishly, prodigality in that sense, right? Hence, the prodigal, prodigal are held to be a very, uh, uh, held to be very base people, uh, 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 base, and here's non-virtual, non-good. The base is the opposite of the good, right? The, the vault, it's the, not vulgar, but it means vulgar to me means just without taste, without class, but vulgar here means not good, lacking virtue, having vice. Base means kind of vicious in that sense, right? Base, uh, uh, since they have many vices simultaneously. So they're, in other words, they have, they, 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 in other words, they're, why? Because this is, their prodigality is tied with their licentiousness. 
and their lack of restraint. Who lack self-restraint and who in their licentious spend lavishly. Hence, the uh, uh, very patient have many vices simultaneously. But in fact, they are not appropriately called by this name because the prodigal person means someone who has one vice, namely ruining his own resources. In other words, usia, usia, usia thing. Uh, he, it, resources here translates usia, a noun derived from the verge to be, which can be philosophical as his being. Hence, the destroys one's re resources is the sense of one's own being, right? That's why it's usia, usia. In other words, usia. Uh, this is why one's own see, one's own being. I think you have to understand, I, I think we should pay attention to this line. Ruinings of one's own being. Because our resources are tied to our existence. I think this is a very important point we have to pay attention to. For Aristotle, there is this, our existence and our resources, the things that we have. The, our, in other words, therefore, it's, uh, vice, this vice destroys our ability to be. Interesting. Our, it's an existential question. Oh, my God. This, this vice is one that attacks our ability to be, our usia. Right? By translating it resources, I think is a, again, this is a cop out. I think he, you know, he's, thanks for the trend, you know, he, he's, he's honest enough to put the notes here. The note is essential because you wouldn't catch it. In the Greek, you'd catch the osia and say, ah, oh, why is this word here? Well, oh, it means it's resources? No, it's this tying between the things we have that we live off of. And that provides for our life, right? The krimata. These are the things, our resources, our property, which provides for us that we live and our life, our existence. So therefore, this is what, what's so wrong. It's therefore, if it's wrong to call the other person who's, it's their prodigality is because of the combination of all these vices, right? It's no prodigality here means literally one vice. He's saying, uh, uh, for the prodigal person is destroyed by his own doing, since the destruction of one's own resources is good. Screamita, uh, 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 his, osia, his own osia, okay, that's a, a, his own osia resources, right? Uh, 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 seems to be a kind of self-destruction on the grounds that it is through these usias, you know, the things, resources, the things, that one is able to live. That's wonderful. That's, that's, this is that weird, there's a metaphor here in the Greek of usia. The usia. The usia is that which, it, it, it is the, it derived from to be, right? So therefore, the verb it is it is derived from the verb usia. He trans, in other words, it's translated as in, in that sense, right? And often we translate this in metaphysical words, being. Uh, so the prodigal person is is destroyed by his own doing, since the destruction of one's own being, <laughs> usia, seems to be a, a kind of self destruction, on the grounds that it is through this these beings, being, beings, use the plural there, this, these things that we be, are, are from, uh, it, it, that one is able to live. We take prodigality then in this sense, that our, we destroy the means by which we live. Regarding things that have a use, it is possible to use them either well or badly. And wealth belongs uh, 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 among the things useful to us. So therefore, in other words, a, a thing, something is a thing. In other words, it can be used well, a thing can be used well or badly, right? And wealth is among the things that can be, that are useful to us or can be useful to us. In each case, the person 
who has the virtue pertaining to a given thing uses it best. So therefore, here's wealth in that sense. This is property and wealth. Hence, he who has the virtue pertaining to property, goods, primatia, uses wealth, aristos, best. In other words, let's speak this. He who has the virtue uh, pertaining to primata, property, goods, uses wealth best. This is the, the liberal person. The liberal person is who's able to use his goods best. The use of money seems to consist in spending and giving it. So, okay, got money, ah, money. Ah. The, use, the use of goods, the use of goods and property, krimata, seems to consist in spending and giving it. In other words, using it, giving it. Whereas taking and safeguarding property, goods, seems to constitute more an acquisition. I think it would have been, again, this is frustrating me, the translation, because money misleads us. We think about money when we... But we have to understand it in terms of goods and property. The things we have. Somebody might have goods that are not necessary. Money is legal currencies that are fungible. Not every good, you know, you can, in other words, you can, of course you can spend it, but... It, but sometimes you have goods how you use it. And I think this is what he says. Therefore, the question of spending or you know and giving it the use of krimata that seems to consist in spending and giving it, whereas taking and safeguarding is acquisition. Thus, it belongs to the liberal person more to give to whom he ought than to take from whom he ought, or to refrain from taking from whom he ought not, since it belongs to virtue more to act well than to fare well, and to do what is beautiful, noble, than not to do what is shameful. So therefore, okay, so the third criteria, first is what? He should, the highest point of, point of this is going to be giving to whom he ought, rather than taking from whom he ought. Uh, 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 and to refrain from taking from, uh, from whom he ought not to. What's missing here is giving to whom he ought not to. That's the missing. That's the missing. The, the, he talks about the giving to whom he ought to. Right? He should. He should. Uh, 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 um, uh, he should give to uh, uh, to whom he ought, rather than take from whom he ought. To refrain. Uh, 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 so therefore, this is the three things: to give more to whom he ought, and to and this is higher than the other. And therefore, this is highest, this is the next, and this is the lowest from taking whom one he ought not to. Since it belongs to virtue to act well, act, in other words, a general principle now. A virtue, arete, what belongs to arete is acting well, not being well, faring well. It's still in a Faring well is a form of virtue, but the uh, the acting, the doing, the doing of it, this is this is higher. This is the this is what virtue is about a doing, not a being. Okay, okay. So um, and to do what is beautiful, noble, right? Kalos, 
than not to do what is shameful. It is also not clear that acting well, um, acting well and doing what is beautiful, noble, colos, corresponds with giving. <laughs> In other words, it's not clear. It's it, it's it, it's not unclear. In other words, it is also not unclear. It is not as a double negative. <laughs> it is also not unclear. That means what? It's clear. It is not unclear that acting well and doing what is noble corresponds with giving, while faring well and not acting shamefully corresponds with taking. So. Is there's a double negative here? The double ne it is also not unclear. So it is very the application here is it's clear. <laughs> One would assume that means it's clear. It's also, in other words, it's not clear that this is not. It's opposite. It's it's also not unclear. So it's the uh, double negative uh, that acting well and doing well is what corresponds with the noble. And that's tied with the giving, giving, uh, uh, acting well, and uh, uh, what is and doing what is noble corresponds with giving, and faring well, and not acting shamefully corresponds with taking. Right. Moreover, gratitude flows to the one who gives, and not to one who refrains from taking. So gratitude. What is gratitude? Gratitude flows from giving. Um, uh, not from uh, not taking. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, uh, There's a problem. Gratitude, the question of gratitude. This is tied to liberality, right? Gr gratitude flows from one who gives and not to one who refrains from taking. And praise even more so. So praise. Praise. Praise is uh, more to one who gives rather than not takes, right? It is also easier to refrain from taking than it is to give. It is easier not to take than it is to give. The people are less inclined to give away their own property than they are to refrain from taking that uh, from another. So they are less inclined to give away their own property than they are or to refrain from taking that of their another. So therefore, that's a problem. Right? This is a very. It's easier to refrain from taking than it is to give. For people are less inclined to give away their own than they are to uh, they are to refrain from taking what is belonging to the other, right? It's easy, you know, I'm, it, I won't take for you, but I'm, it's gonna be hard for me to give my own, right? Oh, this leads us to Machiavelli, which argues that it's gonna be easier for people to take, the, uh, uh, actually it's, 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 it's it, it, take from one's own, you know, the opposite. <laughs> Uh, use if you got to be liberal, use someone else's one, right? Uh, 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 uh. And those who are spoken of as liberal, I don't care. Now, those who are talked about, spoken of, reputation uh, as liberal, and those who are who give, those who give are spoken of as liberal. So therefore, those who give have a reputation of being liberal, whereas those who refrain from taking are praised, but with not with a view to liberality, but more with a view to justice. So wait a minute. Whoa. It's not to, they're not praised for the liber The one who doesn't take is one who is not going to be praised for the liberality. They won't be talking about their, they're not going to be praised for liberality. They're going to be praised for justice. And those who take are not praised at all. They're unjust, right? But those who take what belongs to others. Right, so therefore the question here is: liberality is, is is more tied to giving than the question of taking, right? And whereas taking is more concerned with justice in a sense, um, and injustice, right? The take the question of taking or not taking is very much tied to the question of justice. But giving is tied to liberality, right? Of all those who act on the basis of virtue, of all those who act on the basis of virtue, liberal human beings are perhaps loved most, for they are advantageous to others, beneficial to others, and, and this consists in giving. Okay, they're, they're advantageous. This is the this is the benefit, the good, the good. They're good for others. They're beneficial. 
they give the advantage to others. Therefore, that's why the liberal person is loved most. This is the virtue of the basis of virtue, the liberal person, uh, 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 man, the liberal man, the human being, the li liberal per human being in that sense, is perhaps loved, it uses that word loved most. Actions that accord, in other words, now next, actions that accord with virtue are beautiful, noble, be kolos, and are for the sake of the noble, beautiful, right? Actions are, that are in accord with virtue are beautiful, noble, kolos, and for the sake of the beautiful, in that sense. Liberal person, too, then will give for the sake of the beautiful, noble, kolos, right? And correctly, not only they give correctly. He will give to whom he ought as much as and when he ought and everything else that accompanies correct giving. Correct giving. Not just giving, correct giving. In other words, it, it, he just talked about the praise one gets for giving. But now the virtue of it, the real virtue is not just giving. It's the correct giving and, and done so in regards to what is beautiful, a coloss, noble and beautiful. Moreover, he will do these things with pleasure or without pain. In other words, he does, you know, he's not going to have pain to doing it. He's not going to, oh, I don't want to give it. I don't want to give it. It's going to be, he's going to do it freely. He's not going to do it like, oh, I don't really want to do it. You know? Oh, it hurts. You know, it's, it's, it's. He will do so with pleasure or without pain, since that what accords with virtue is pleasant or not painful. In fact, least of all, it is painful. It is least of all painful. So therefore, if he's done, if it's really out of virtue, he's doing this, he's not going to feel pain when he gives his goods to the people in the way he ought to, right? But the person who gives to whom he ought not, or to, or who gives what for the sake of what is no okay, or who does n who gives not for the sake of what is noble, coloss, or beautiful, but for some other cause, will not be spoken of as liberal, but as something else, which is the case also with the person who is pained. By giving. So, Tupper, in other words, the person who is going to be, even if he's giving it noble, it, it, if his giving is right and correct, but he's doing it like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. It hurts. It, 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 has, it goes against what he wants to do. He does, and he kind of forced, he feels forced to do it. This is not, this is not liberal as what is the person who gives. But not to whom, but to one who ought not to, and for the sake, in a way that is not noble, right? That's ignoble in that sense, or in, in virtue, uh, ugly, or in, unpleasant, right? Um, uh, 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 he, in other words, to, who gives to whom he ought not, or gives uh, not for the sake of what is beautiful, but for some other reason, benefit. I'm doing it for benefit. I'm doing some utility, good. I'm going to get something for it, a profit, you know, some some other cause other than the noble or the beautiful cause. Or that I've done it in pain. Right? This is not, we can't speak of this person. For he would choose property, the, the kermita, rather than noble action, beautiful action. And this is not the mark of a liberal uh, human being. Liberal, uh, the liberal person, the liberal person. So therefore, this is a very important point here. That in other words, if I choose money, rather than I have a choice money, between doing well, doing noble actions, and good money, goods, property, krimita, I choose krimita. This is not a liberal person. If I care more for goods than for good actions, noble actions, we do actions, then I'm not liberal. Liberality is not about have, uh, 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 
caring about goods. It's about the caring of doing good or beautiful or noble actions. The liberal person will also refrain from taking where he ought not. Since someone who does not honor much, uh, property goods, for, the, uh, uh, for someone who does not honor krimata, will not engage in this sort of taking. So if he honors, does not honor criminal, he doesn't honor criminal, he honors no, the noble and just. Um, uh, he would not even be apt to ask for goods, for property, for krimata. Since someone who is a benefactor is not readily the recipient of a benefit. And the liberal person will take from where he ought. In other words, liberals will take where from where he ought to. For example, from his own possessions, not on the grounds that it is not on the grounds that it is ignoble. It is noble to do so, but on the grounds that it is necessary, so that he may be able to give to others. In other words, so not on the grounds that it is noble to do so, but on the grounds that it is necessary so that he may be able to give to others. But he may not be careless with his own possession, since he wishes, at least, um, uh, 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 again, this is possessions, I think, uh, uh, goods in that sense, his own possessions, since he may wish, since he wishes at least to aid some people through these very possessions. So therefore, he has to be careful with them. He must take care of them. He can't be careless with his goods, his, re his resources. He needs to be careful with them, take care of them, because he's going to need to use them to help others, to do these things, right? To aid some people through these resources, these possessions. And he will not give just to anyone so that he may be able to give to whom he ought and when and where it is beautiful and noble to do so. So therefore, he has, he's not going to give the give. He's going to give when it's right and necessary, necessary and noble to do so. Yet, it's very, yet it very much belongs to the liberal person also to exceed in giving in such that there is little left for himself. It is typical of a liberal person not to look out for himself. He forgets himself. There's a danger. This is the danger of liberality. The danger of liberality is he, he's, he gives too much of himself, of his goods, and then he doesn't, he forgets about himself and his needs. And therefore there's little left for himself. For it is typical of this not to look out for himself. Liberality is spoken of in reference to a person's resources, right? His usia. Okay, this is again usia, usia again. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, this is where it's going to drive me crazy because this resources here is not usia in that sense. Uh, frustrating. Person's own resources. Now, here is footnote three. He'll talk about translation of the following phrase follows by one of Another reading is suggested by Stuart. This person gives in accords with his resources, right? His own being in that sense. This is the word resources, I think, being. Usia. Um, is in reference to one's person's resources, his being, and that's Usia. Uh, since what is liberal consists not in the specific amount given, but in the characteristic of the giver. And the characteristic relates to his resources, his, his being, his being, his uh, uh, beings in that sense. Um, this person gives in accord with his, this is, in other words, the translation there is by water and Burnett, but Stuart Another commenter gives another way, and this person gives in accord with his resources, his being, and his being. I, I agree with Stuart more than I agree with Bywater here. Um,
Okay, let's continue. We're going to stop here. I'm going to be here forever. <sighs> Relate to his own resources. Um, in fact, nothing prevents the person who gives a lesser amount from being the more liberal one. So if it's not the amount he gives, but uh, if he gives uh, from a lesser total amount, in other words, the question of how does he give in other words, it's not the specific amount given, but the characteristic of how is he giving it. This is the idea. This is in the scripture. You have that line about what's better, the, 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 the wealthy person who gives that or the poor woman who gives that one coin, right? but it's everything she owns, right? Who's the more, this is the, the question here is what the characteristic relates to the reason uh, of what is it, for nothing prevents the person who gives a lesser amount from being the more liberal one. If he gives uh, from a lesser total amount. And those who did not acquire what they themselves own, but inherited, inherited, seem more seem more liberal, for they are are without the experience of need. In other words, this is the, the those who inherit are going to be seen to be more liberal because they never had need. They are without the experience of need, and all people are fonder fonder of the works or products that are that are uh, their own just as parents and poets are this is an uh, aristotle's remark here similar to one of socrates and plato's republic but, and that is that is that the founder the pope parents and poets are lovers of their own their products their works right their works um the problem here is that's going to be christ and therefore it's going to be the one who disinherited it are going to be more liberal than the one who had who, who didn't in other words they never knew need they didn't experience need the one who experienced need and that they made this this these resources these goods are theirs they like their children and it's going to be it's going to be more a little harder for them to give it away but the one who inherited it, they didn't have the sense of that, right? So therefore, that's why it's going to be interesting. It is also not easy for a liberal person to be wealthy. Since he is inclined neither to accept nor to safeguard money or resources, goods, goods, goods. Rather, he is inclined even to throw it away since he does not honor re goods, money, resources. Crimea, Crimea, goods in that sense, on its own account, but rather for the sake of giving it. So that's interesting. It's 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 going to be hard for him to be a, a, a wealthy person is going to care more about the goods, in acquiring and keeping them. The liberal person is more about the goods in order for how he can give them or use them. Okay. That's why he doesn't really care. He doesn't care. He doesn't honor the goods in the same way, right? He does not honor Krimata in this uh, on account uh, on his own account, but rather the giving of it, right? Hence, the accusa uh, the accusation is leveled against uh, chance that those who are most deserve wealth are in are the least wealthy, in fact. Therefore, this is the thing. This is the accusation again, leveled against chance, luck, chance. That chance, fit, you know, the external world, chance. Um, give wealth to those, uh, don't give wealth to the ones who deserve it most. Yet this happens not without reason. In other words, he says that this does not, that this situation of chance does not happen without reason. For it is not possible to possess goods without taking the requisite care so to have it. Mm -hmm. Just as in the case with the other things. In other words, you need to have the care to have it. If you want things, in other words, the goods, the cremata, the possessions, you need to have, to, you know, you, you, you know, it is not uh, possible to possess these goods, the krimata, 
without taking the requisite care uh, so to have it. The liberal person surely will not give to um, uh, the surely per the liberal person will surely not give to whom he ought not and when he ought not or any such other thing since he would no longer be acting in accord with liberality and by spending and by spending on these things he would not be able to spend on the things he ought so in other words this is again if you if you're, if you're, if you're spending on things which you ought not you're not able to spend on what you ought right? for just as we uh, just as we said he who spends in accord with his resources and on what he ought is liberal whereas he who exceeds these is prodigal so therefore if, you, if you're not spending if you in other words prodigality is okay not taking care of your resources so the liberal person may be need at one level the liberal person again this is a difference between seeming and being the action we in other words people will see the giving and perceives the giving and people will held to be by their they will be held to be liberal by their giving but the danger here is what they give to they give so much that they don't, they don't have they don't have things to give when they need to give them to whom they ought to give them therefore the you you and then you, 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 unless you take care of wealth it won't be there in other words goods goods require care then their maintenance he says right that's your requisite care to have it like other things so in order to be able to you know in, in order to spend uh, and to give to whom one ought to you have to have it and it has to be yours not the giving of others it's too easy in other words, that's not very liberal the giving of what belongs to others for aristotle that's not you that's unjust that is unjust the the, the taking to give the taking from others to give to others is an injustice is, is a problem of justice it's not a problem it is not a characteristic of morality The liberal person will surely not give to whom he ought not, and he ought not, or when he ought not, or any other such thing, since he would no longer be acting with the court of liberality. And by spending on these things, he would not be able to spend on the things he ought. For just as was said, he who spends in accords with his resources, and on what he ought to spend, you know, uh, uh, is liberal whereas he who uh, 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 exceeds is prodigal hence we do not speak of tyrants <laughs> hence we do not speak of tyrants as prodigal because for them to exceed their wealth great wealth through gifts and expenditure seems no easy <laughs> oh this is a good it ends in a weird line oh we don't call tyrants prodigal why because well, uh, because for them to exceed their great wealth through from gifts and expenditures doesn't, doesn't it seems 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 not is no easy thing right? Okay, that's a very interesting. That is this last sentence here is a very humorous sentence in that sense. Since then, liberality is a neat. That's what he, now, he, now he moves into. He, he ends with a kind of a joke, but. The problem of tyranny. What is it? Tyrant cannot be liberal. Tyrant is not liberal. Nor is he prodigal. He doesn't seem prodigal either because what he has he has all this wealth that others give him. <laughs> I, I, I think that should be quotes, right? And ex expenditures <laughs> is taking, you know, spending it usually belongs to take from things he took, right? His power. Seems no, you know, yes, he has all this extra. 
Um, now let's continue next um, paragraph. Since then, liberality is a mean with respect to the giving and taking of goods. Parimita. The liberal person will give and spend on what he ought and as much as he ought in, in small and great alike. So therefore, in things, small, macro, and uh, uh, great alike. And he will do so with pleasure. So again, so he will, a liberal person who will give, uh, he will uh, 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 spend anything, he will give and spend on what he ought. And as much as he ought, and in things both small and great alike. And he will do so with pleasure. Moreover, he will take from where he ought, and as much as he ought. Since the virtue is a mean with respect to both giving and taking, he will do both as he ought. For this sort of taking corresponds with equitable giving, whereas it is not uh, 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 what uh, where, whereas what is not of this character is contrary. In other words, whereas what is not of this character is contrary. In other words, he's giving equitable giving. In other words, he takes from where he ought to give to who he ought. There's equity, there's an equity here. And if it's not, if he takes from whom he ought not to give to that, that's unequitable. If he take, uh, takes from whom he ought, but gives it to whom he ought not, again, that's unequitable. There must be an equity here. Similar, uh, and that is uh, not of this character is contrary. Or it's not, uh, it is not of this character is contrary. There is equitable here, equitable giving. Taking and giving must be equitable. From them. Who is being taken from, from must be equitable in that sense. And against this is tied with justice in that sense, very much tied with liberality. Thus is very much it concerns the taking of it is tied to justice. The giving and taking that corresponds with each other then arises simultaneously in the same person. But the contrary kind clearly does not. So therefore, in other words, the, the giving and taking that corresponds with each other arises simultaneously in the same person, but the contrary kinds are not. If he happens to spend contrary to what he ought and to do what is beautiful, he will be pained, though in a measured way and as he ought, since it belongs to virtue to feel both pleasure and pain at things one ought, and as one ought. So therefore, in other words, he, in other words if he spends something, what he, in other words, if he happens to spend contrary to what he ought, and to what is noble, contrary to what is beautiful, no, colos, he will be pained, but in a measured way, and as he ought, since it belongs to virtue to feel both pleasure and pain at the things one ought, as and as one ought. The liberal person, moreover, is easy is easy to deal with. Okay, the liberal person, moreover, is easy to deal with in goods, karmata matters, Mater good, material matters, matters of goods, in the matters of goods or property. Um, for he can, um, for he can be done in justice since he does not honor money at any rate. And he is more vexed if he fails to spend what he ought than pained if he does not spend what he ought. And he is not content with the view of Samadites. Now this is Samadites, Samadites of Kos, the fifth century poet who's known for his greed. <laughs> According to the story Arisar tells his rhetoric when Samadites was asked by the wife of the tyrant Hera whether it was better to be wealthy or wise, he replied, wealthy for I see that the wise hang about the doors of the rich. <laughs> okay, that's the, the Samanites line, right?
There's note five. Where is there? It is. Oh, there it is. So therefore, this is not in context of this. He's going to be what? A liberal person is going to, you know, property is going to be what? Or he can have the justice done to them. Because why? Because he doesn't, it doesn't really care. It's not going to hurt him as much. Why? If it's going to be about taking his goods. Taking, he doesn't really care about them in that sense, right? He's going to be lexed, vexed on this. He's going to, he'll be more vexed if he fails to spend what he ought than pain if he does not spend what he ought not. If he does spend what he ought not. In other words, he's going to be more pained by spending, not being able to spend what he ought. But he'll pay me, okay. Both of these will be pain, but the pain of not spending what he ought will be more painful than, will cause him more pain than the pain that he will have when he spends when perhaps maybe he shouldn't have been, right? If he spends what he ought not. And is not content with the view of Samaritans. That they rather have, in other words, wealth is better than wisdom. Because why the wise hang out with the wealthy. The prodigal person uh, 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 thoroughly errs in these matters too. For he neither takes pleasure in the things he ought, or as he ought, nor is, is he pained. So in other words, he doesn't take pleasures in the things he ought to, or as he, the pleasures as, as he ought to, but nor is he pained in the same ways when he ought to be pained. This will be more manifest as we proceed. It is stated by us that prodigality and stinginess are excesses and efficiencies in two ways, in giving and taking. For we put spending in the category of giving. Okay, we spend in that sense of taking and giving. So spending is kind of a giving, right? So it's two ways, giving and taking. And we spending is a kind of giving. Now, prodigality exceeds in giving and not taking. And is deficient in take it is deficient in taking. Where stinginess is deficient in giving, but exceeds in taking. Though only in small things. Okay, stinginess is okay, that's the difference. So prodigality, it doesn't really care about taking so much. It's, it's an excess of giving. Prodig exceeds in giving, but not taking, and is deficient in taking. Stinginess is deficient in giving, but exceeds in taking, but not only in small things. The difference part of prod, uh, the different part of prodigality then does not does not all fit together, since it is not easy to give to all while giving taking from none. So it's hard, right? It's, it's not easy to give to all from not taking none. Resources quickly run out for those who give their own possessions to others. And these are the very people who are held to be prodigal. Therefore, they lose everything. They, they lose all their resources. They harm themselves in that sense. Yet this sort of person, at least, would seem to be better. This person would seem to be better. And not in a, and in not a small way than the stingy person. Because he is easily curable both by the effect by the effect both of age and want and he can arrive at the middle term because uh, 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 his pos he possesses the trait of the liberal person so the prodigal person can be cured he just has to learn moderation he just ha he, in other words he gives he gives he like he enjoys giving the problem is he doesn't have enough judgment to decide when he should and when, when, to whom and when he should, right? And therefore, this is this can be cured in that sense through age and want, okay? But effect, by the effects of age and want, he can arrive at a middle term because he possesses the trait of the person. He both gives and does not take. But in neither case, but in neither case, does he do so as he or or well so therefore he doesn't in other words in neither case he, he gives 
and but he doesn't take, but he doesn't do so well as he ought or well, right? Then, therefore, it, it, there may be through experience, a, through age and, you know, experience, age and one, he may come to know when to take it, right? If then he should be habituated in, in the manner indicated or changed in some other way, he would be liberal, for he would give to whom he ought and not take from where he ought not. Or according to the manuscript, he will give to whom he ought and take from where he ought. <laughs> okay, all right. This is another very interesting point. There's a small change in the manuscript, right? Uh, 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 or take from where he ought, not where, and take uh, and not take, not, not the double negative, right? Hence, too, uh, his character does not seem to be base. The prodigal person is not necessarily base. Since he exceeds in giving and not taking is the mark of, of neither a corrupt or low-born person, but a foolish one. So he's not, he's not base, he's foolish. He's not a, either a corrupt or a low-born person, but he's a foolish one. He who is prodigal in this manner is held to be much better than the stingy person, both on, account, uh, uh, on the account of the point stated, because the prodigal person benefits many and the stingy no one not even himself this is interesting the stingy doesn't even benefit himself in other words it's in other words even though the prodigal person is is not a virtuous person he still helps others he's in other words he's 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 better than the stingy. in other words he's less than you know in other words he is much better than the stingy person we're going to come to the point stated and because the prodigal benefits many people, the stingy, the stingy one does not, even himself. But the majority who are, but the majority of those who are prodigal, as been said, also take from where they ought not, and are in this respect stingy or liberal. Now, it's all of a sudden the move is they take when they ought not to take. So if you become spendthrift, then you'll all of a sudden you want to spend more and you start taking from someone else. They become disposed in taking because they wish to spend, but are not able to do so readily since their own possessions are quickly depleted, right? They are compelled, therefore, to supply resources from some other quarters. At the same time, too, on account of having no thought of what is beautiful, noble, for those, they care little about taking from any or all quarters. So therefore, they'll take from other. They'll, they'll take from where they ought not to take. From for they a desire to give, and how they supply uh, 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 the necessary things to give, the resources and things to give, or from where they do so makes no difference to them. In other words, they don't care about where they come from. It makes no difference. Because of this very thing, their acts of giving are not liberal. Since they are not noble, or for the sake of beautiful, no, not kolos, or for the, or the sake for what is noble, or in other words, they, since they are not noble, or not done for the sake of what is noble, nor are they done as they ought to be done, right? They, they're not done as they ought to be. Rather, sometimes they make wealthy those who ought to labor, and they might give nothing to those whose characters are measured, whereas they would give much to those who flatter them or furnish some other pleasure. In other words, so they, in other words they're giving to the wrong people. They give people, instead of giving to the people they give people things that would they should be working rather than not working. They're, they're, they ought to labor. They make wealthy those who ought to labor. And they might give nothing to those characters who are more moderate and more benefit from them. And then they give much to those who could also flatter them, right, and furnish them pleasures. Or were they doing it for the sake of flattery and for the pleasure of flat, being flattered? They give to those who will flatter them and give them pleasure. They'll give them also or other pleasures, you know, <laughs> other pleasures, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Wink, 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 you know. Um, uh, 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 flatter them and furnish them some other pleasures. The things of Aphrodite. <laughs> uh, hence, many of the prodigals are also licentious. For they spend readily and are lavish in their licentious pursuits. And because they do not live with a view to what is beautiful, noble, a close, right? they incline in the directions of the pleasures. The prodigal person who is without guidance then changes these directions. Yet one who obtains the requisite care could arrive at the middle situation in what is proper. In other words, the earlier one. In other words, remember, the prodigality on its own, because as long as it doesn't take from where it doesn't ought to take, it only dispends, it is only misguided, it is foolish. It lacks wisdom, it lacks the judgment, what is correct. And through habituation and training, it can achieve the meat, what is right, the virtue. It's in the right direction. But if they start, if, if in order to get the pleasure of spending, they keep on taking where they ought not to. And because they don't, they don't have, they don't, they don't they, they, and, and they care more for the pleasure. The pleasure overcomes them that they start to take where they ought not in order to get the pleasure of giving. And they start giving not for the sake of giving, but for the sake of getting pleasures, either flattery or that, then they become something else. They become, they, they, they blur between prodigal to licentious. They blur these things and they become unjust, more unjust. But stinginess is both incurable, for it seems that age and every infirmity makes people stingy. <laughs> in other words, as you get old, you become more stingy, because what? Age and infirmity. And inborn in human nature, in human beings, to a great degree, then is prodigality. In other words, care for oneself. Inborn in human beings, too. in other words, stinginess is also inborn more. They need, they have wants, they need needs for their wants, and they need to have those wants needed, and they need to have the material in order to satisfy those wants, right? There's something innate in that. For most people, or the many, for most people, or the many, are lovers of goods, karimita, more than they are inclined to giving it. They love goods. They love possessions. And this position extends wildly. This this position extends wildly, widely, and is of multiple kinds, since there seems to be many ways to be stingy. Because stingy is divided into two categories, deficiency, uh, deficiency in giving and exceeding and taking, it is not present as it is not present as a complete whole in everyone, but is sometimes divided. Some people exceed in taking, while others are deficient in giving. For those who have such names as thrifty, penny pinchers, and misers are deficient in giving. But they do not aim at the property of others or wish to take from others. So therefore, they, they only care about... The, uh, uh, so therefore... Those who just are unwilling to give, like thrifty, penny pinchers, misers, they're not, they're concerned with not giving, not with taking what belongs to others. Okay? So they, uh, 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 at the prop, in other words, they do not aim at the property of others or wish to take from others. Some people are like this on account of a certain decency, and they avoid shameful things. And their and their avoidance of shameful things. So therefore, there's a, in other words, they, they they some people are stingy and not taken. In other words, the stinginess may be a, a avoidance of not taking in that sense, right? Avoidance of shameful things. For some seem to guard their money or their goods, their possessions, krimata, or at least they assert precisely so that they will not be compelled at some point to do something shameful. In other words, I'm going to be careful about money. I want to care, because if I'm poor, I'll be forced to be 
act degradingly, something I think is shameful. In other words, I'm being I'm not giving my money, my resources, I'm being stingy with it because if I lose my resources and I have to do things and I have to beg and do things like that, or maybe sell my labor to someone in a certain way that I don't like doing, and therefore I have to be servile, and that's not good. That's that's great. I want to avoid shame and and shameful things. At some point, they will do something shameful. Among these fall also the skin flints and everything of that sort. In other words, some guard uh, their goods, or at least they assert that they will not be compelled at some point to do some shameful. Among these fall the skin flints and every one of that sort, who are so named because they exceed in giving nothing. Some in turn abstain from properties of others out of fear on the grounds that it is not easy for someone to take the property of others and not and not have those others take uh, his in return. So if, it was, if I, the way I do it, out of fear, if I take their stuff, someone else is going to take my stuff. <laughs> so the first thing is they do so out of uh, kind of not to do something shameful. But other than the aspect of the next level is this, I'm not going to take other people's stuff because, of, well, then people take my stuff. You know, it's going to be hard if I start taking other people's stuff. It's going to be, they're going to start taking my stuff. Okay, out of fear of that, on the grounds that it is not easy for someone to take property of others and not uh, and not have those others take it is in return. They are satisfied then neither to take nor to give to another. This one, they're going to neither take nor give this 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 other person here. But so that's that, you know, the stingy, the stin flint, the, the miser, penny pincher, the skin flint, and these are that. Right? The next one is the one out of fear. And the third is one. Um, but still, other people exceed when it comes to taking, in the sense that they take from everywhere and anything. For example, those who perform illiberal tasks, such as brothel keepers and all of their ilk the user users who spend uh, uh, who lend small amounts at high interest okay uh ministry varies another reading is the final phrase who perform small tasks for much money in other words the, the reading of the final, who small small tasks for much money minor things in other words of this base base they lend, this is two words. They, one, what users who spend more money, users, are, but then they, then the type of person, this is a person who does small things for a lot of money, and, and prostitutes mm -hmm. or murderers. For all of these people take from where they ought not, and in quantities they ought not. Shameful greediness for gain appears to be what they have in common since they all uh, endure reproach for the sake of gain and small gain at that in other words the gain is small it's money it's some good some little thing not big gain they're, and they're not a tyrant they're not a tyrant okay i'm not talking about tyrant they're not this is not a tyrant they're not doing these they're not their gain they're getting is not something vast criminal enterprise or, it's only a small thing. It's a small thing. A small benefit. Um, this is a petty, it's something pet small. They do hard, shameful things for little. Small gain of that. For we do not call stingy those who take great amounts for they ought not, or of what they ought not. For example, tyrants who plunder cities and temple villages, te temples, they're not stingy. <laughs> we speak of them as more wicked, impious, and unjust. Okay, So therefore, this is that. Uh, so therefore, uh, the, the stingy versus the tyrant, the tyrant who sacks villages and steals, pillages temples, right? Plunder cities and pillages temples. They are wicked, impious, and unjust, right? Yet the gambler and the thief... A, uh, um, following Apple, we, we delete the third time pirate um, in light of the next two uh, two reference. Uh, but this is I don't know. I think because the, in the Greek the pirate is there too. Um, the, in the gambler and uh, uh, 
the gambler, pirate, and thief do not belong among the stingy, since they are greedy for gain in the in a shameful way. Both engage in the business and endure reproach for the sake of gain. Thieves, thieves running their greatest risk for the sake of loot, while gamblers gain from their friends. Uh, and the pirate, was the, pirate, the pirate is mentioned. See, that's a problem. Was pirate supposed to be there? What about piracy? Why is pi I mean, in the Greek, it is the gambler, the pirate, and the thief. The pirate is in the middle. He then speaks of only the gambler and the thief. But then what is this? The, the thief is kind of like a... Uh, uh, a the, the pirate is kind of both a gambler and a thief. Because what? Thieves running the greatest risk from the, the sake of loot, while gamblers gain from their friends to whom they ought rather to give, right? So thieves running the greatest risk for the sake of loot, right? While they, they, they take, they endure for the sake of uh, the business. And, in other words, they both engage, uh, engage in their business, endure reproach for their gain. But thieves run the greater risk because, the, and pirates also do, they loot. Gamblers only take from their friends or people to whom they ought rather to give. Since both types then wish to gain from where they ought not, their greediness for gain is shameful. And so all such kinds of taking are marked by a kind of stinginess. Stinginess is appropriate, uh, uh, appropriately said to be contrite liberality, both because it is greater than vice, uh, uh, than prodigality, and because people err more in this direction of this extreme, in, in, in a, a direction of this extreme, rather than the direction of prodigy. Because remember, a product, it's going to be more natural to be stingy or not to give than to give overly. So therefore, it's more, it's going to be, people are more inclined towards not giving than giving. Hence why those who are giving can be corrected, whereas the stingy is going to be hard to correct. Once you have, if you have a stingy nature, it's going to be hard to correct that, okay, it's going to be because the, the and therefore we have to be careful what kind of stinginess. Is it the stinginess of, in regards to just merely giving, if it's a low stinginess, which is less, on, in other words, on level of injustice, the, the stinginess of not taking, not giving, but not taking is better than the that of the taking. Would not belong, in other words, the stinginess of getting something from who belongs to others. The, the gambler, the thief, and the pirate, right? Um, and then the last sentence here, this ends it. This is as for what concerns liberality, then, the, and the vice is opposed to it. Let us this much bend and say. So we, here we end. This has been a long one. I'm probably going to say it's going to be the longest of one of the longest, one, the next. I think uh, um, uh, greatness of soul will be long. Megosukia will be also long. Uh, we'll stop here. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please put them below. Uh, and when I see them, I will respond to them and uh, things like this. If you uh, like the video, hit like, hit the like button, uh, share it with a friend, share it on your social media, share, bring others' attention to it. Uh, sh uh, 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 as you sh uh, hit the like buttons and sharing it it, 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 it helps the algorithms on these things. Maybe more people will see this. Another thing is if you uh, have not subscribed, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. We um, um, uh, encourage, uh, you know, people who are interested in these things, these kind of topics are doing them. Share it with a friend, share it with it so that you can encourage them to come and see the channel and subscribe. I would like to grow the channel some more. Uh, uh, helps. Everything, more subscriptions will help us get more attention. Um, if you've not liked what I did, if you have a problem with this, you just didn't like it, if that's it, if you have a criticism, well, of course, you can always hit a thumbs down. You can always hit thumbs down, but say why in the comments. That way we can all benefit from it. Okay? So maybe the others can learn. 
Um, uh, you can follow me on social media. The links are below if you want to know about, more about me as a scholar and a researcher. The academic social media links are below that. And if you want to help me to do what I do, um, uh, uh, want to contribute and help help, help uh, assist this, now, of course, you can always send it to me. Find my social media link and you can send an Amazon gift card. Um, uh, but uh, uh, my academic social media email and like that. And it's like, gift card, yeah, that's nice. But another way you can do so on a regular basis is through the links of subscribe star Patreon. Okay. Um, and the next thing you can do is uh, you want to help. And you can, another way you can help is buy one of the book, my published books. Um, they're listed below. You can do it, do it to, in your local bookstore, or, or you can order it through an online bookstore like Amazon or uh, Barnes and Noble or similar place. Um, if you want to really, if, uh, if those of you studying the politics and wanting to kind of have a student guide to do this, my notebook for Aristotle's politics published by Lulu be a good book in that sense. Um, if you buy it directly through Lulu, I will get the money that bookstores get. So uh, please do that. I, you know, uh, 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 I hope I, ho I was hoping more people would buy it, but apparently it's too expensive. Um, it's like th under thirty dollars, but it's a whole politics. It's the whole politics, and it's a very good. I should do another video about it, about it to sell, kind of sell it. And my wife says, you know? "Well, okay, uh, uh, that's it. Um, we turn next time to chapter two, which deals with um, uh, uh, magnificence. This is so. If liberality deals with small, you know, the kind of small money given of your money, the given." The next one will be about magnificence. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a good day. See you.